Well, varicose veins are really common. Um, exact estimates of incidence vary because lots of people with veins don't present for attention. Um, but very, very common, up to a third or even more of the population may notice varicose veins in their legs at some point in their lives. Well, veins are, are bulging, dilated veins on the surface of the leg, um, which can be quite uncomfortable, painful, achy, and can be associated with some limb swelling, uh, and are also very unsightly. Some people seek treatment simply because of the way they look. Varicose veins look like blue, bumpy, tortuous, snaky veins just under the skin on the surface of the leg. The commonest site on the legs for veins to appear is below the knee, generally on the inside of the leg, but they can appear in any part of the leg. The cause of veins is faulty valves deep inside the leg. Um, the valves are there to direct the flow of blood back towards the heart, and the blood flow should be from the veins on the surface into the deep veins. And when there's a faulty valve in the leg, that allows high-pressure blood to blow out and fill the surface veins. And that, that faulty valve can be some distance away from the, the bulging vein that the uh, patients pointing to, but that's the underlying cause. They cause a range of symptoms. Um, sometimes they don't hurt at all, but very frequently they cause aching, sensation of congestion, sensation of heaviness in the legs, often cause swelling, uh, and sometimes symptoms that people don't associate with veins, but itchy skin, for instance, very commonly due to veins and people don't realise it's due to it. Conventional treatment for varicose veins was a surgical operation involving stripping out the underlying vein and removing the surface veins with lots of cuts. It works quite well as far as it goes, but it generally involves a full anaesthetic, significant size incisions compared to the keyhole incisions we make nowadays, substantial risk of infection and bruising, and the long-term follow-up uh, results are very poor. Recurrence of varicose veins after stripping is very, very common. Conventional stripping has now been replaced with a whole repertoire of techniques for veins, and these include uh, radiofrequency ablation, which is one of the catheter-based endothermal techniques to treat veins, endovenous laser therapy or EVLT which is the laser equivalent way of treating veins. There are now percutaneous, in other words keyhole ways of treating faulty uh, perforator veins. Um, injections for veins have improved enormously. Previously they were just done by direct vision. Now we use ultrasound to find the underlying faulty vein which may not be visible on the surface but if we cannulate the faulty vein in ultrasound and inject uh, the sclerosant, that's a much more effective way of doing it. And generally injections can be divided into foam sclerotherapy where we inject a sort of shaving foam-like substance to destroy the vein, and microsclero, which is the technique we use for the uh, surface veins. Uh, and, and finally ambulatory phlebectomy or phlebectomy, which is a technique whereby after treating the underlying faulty veins you remove the surface veins through a series of little tiny two millimetre or even less tiny incisions to pull out the faulty veins which then seal over with a paper stitch. And the, the key thing is to select which, which of the techniques from that repertoire is best suited to treat that patient. Um, and sometimes there's more than one way of treating a particular problem, in which case you can give a patient the pros and cons of, a, of the different treatments and they can choose the one they like the sound of. Um, on other occasions for a particular vein problem there's one technique which is far superior to all the others, in which case we can make that recommendation and explain why. Veins can reoccur after treatment, even if someone's had absolutely perfect treatment which leaves nothing but normal veins in their legs. Because of their genetic makeup, uh, the normal veins in their legs may become varicose in future years. Well, spider veins have lots of names. Some people call them broken veins, some people call them thread veins. Spider veins are very prominent, purpley, uh, irregular veins sometimes in big blotchy patches, sometimes scattered very finely all over the leg. Spider veins can appear anywhere on the body, but the commonest site is, is on the legs. The specific cause of spider veins is not known, but they are often associated with faulty valves inside the leg. Sometimes they are and sometimes they aren't, but it's very important to know whether somebody with spider veins has faulty valves underlying it. Because if you embark on treatment for the surface veins without checking for deep veins, then you can get a recurrence very quickly. There are two main ways of treating spider veins. One is to use lasers or derivatives of lasers, and the other is to inject them. Um, injections involves very, very fine needles, usually some form of magnification or bright illumination uh, to find the, uh, either the main feeder vein or the reticular vein underneath. Injecting that with a sclerosant, which sticks the vein together and makes it less prominent. Um, laser works by uh, treating each part of the particular spider vein just by burning it and, and, and ablating it that way. 
There is no way of guaranteeing permanently removing spider veins. Um, once someone's leg has started to make spider veins, it'll carry on making spider veins, uh, even if there are no underlying vein problems, even if you've made sure the deep circulation is healthy. Um, it may be, well be necessary to top up the treatment in the future.